So now in this video, I thought we would charge a super capacitor. Now these uh, green caps, this is an old uh, capacitor here, and I don't know the story these days, but uh, especially when I bought them, they were known to be knockoffs right here. So they claim 500 farad. It's uh, probably nowhere uh, close to that. Maybe it's only 250 farad or whatnot. But in case, we probably can charge it to 2.7 uh, volts. So what 500 farad means is that if you charge it or discharge it at uh, one amp, then it will take 500 seconds to change one volt. So at uh, one amp, if it's one volt and uh, you're charging it, it will take 500 seconds to get to two volts. And that's how you can actually measure its actual value. Just charge it at an amp and count the seconds that it takes. And that will be the uh, farads when it goes from one volt to two volt. To see how charged it is, is pretty straightforward. So we put the black probe to the negative side, red probe to the uh, positive side. And you can see that it's at uh, 0.722 volts. So we can charge it about two more volts. We're just going to charge it with my portable power supply right here. So the alligator clips, they come from the power supply. Unfortunately, it's not going to work out too well with this power supply because it has short circuit protection. So I'll show you what that means. The uh, supercapacitor lets current through it so easily. I have this set to 0.1 amp right now. If you watch the uh, display here when I make a connection, now you can see the output turned off. And I don't know how safe it is to keep this connected to the power supply while that is off. So I'm going to keep this brief. So that's the problem. This thought there was a short circuit, which is great if you want to avoid short circuits. But it's a uh, big problem if you want to try to uh, charge super capacitors because they look like a short circuit. This is a Schottky diode. It has a lower forward voltage than most uh, rectifier diodes. And it can handle a lot of current here. So we got 15, I think that means up to uh, 15 amps. SQ and then 045. I think that means it'll block up to 45 volts. Well, reverse bias. You don't want to uh, exceed that. And we will uh, set the meter to measure diode. So right now it's continuity. It'll just beep if we have a short circuit. And now it's set to uh, measure diodes and uh, we'll zoom back and we'll see that according to the meter I think this is at uh, one milliamp it only has a forward voltage of about 0.15 volts it's uh, really low but I'm pretty sure that goes up a bit at higher current so now I have the power supply output back on we'll zoom back a little bit you can see our shot key dial there and at a hundred milliamps right there now it's holding it uh, pretty good it looks like and we're not getting that short circuit problem also even if uh, this does turn off this will prevent the uh, shot key down the super capacitor from discharging into the power supply so now from earlier testing i did find that if i go uh let's just go up uh, one at a time here if i go up to one amp then i didn't have that short circuit problem without the uh, shot key diode. But I think when the super capacitor gets uh, more charged, so there you can see uh, we got an amp, but it looks like it's not holding an amp very well. Looks like it's bouncing all around. But uh, we can charge that uh, like that. But again, I think once current starts going down, it will might see a short circuit, turn the output off, and I don't want that. So we're definitely gonna use the shot key diode. And so we'll grab another alligator clip here so that I can keep my hands free. Clip to the shot key dial there, the cathode, and the other side to the positive side of the super capacitor right there. Again, making sure we don't get a short circuit. So now with the more solid connection, it looks like it's holding that amp uh, really good right there. Now, if I... Uh, I want to make sure those aren't flashing at this time. If I hit the button, we'll see the uh, voltage there. So you can see the voltage going up. And uh, it's it's gone up uh, quite a bit. So that's not the actual voltage of the capacitor. We'd have to measure that with the uh, multimeter. I'll turn the power off really quick. And we'll do that next. So now we got the uh, multimeter. I'll turn the output on. We don't have to uh, rush this too much. And then now we'll get the voltage of the capacitor there. And uh, so it's uh, 9.9 .9 right now. And again, 
this isn't completely accurate, but if we get to uh, one, which we're about to get to, and then count the number of seconds it takes to get to two volts, so one volt to two volts, then we'd have a good idea of the capacitance of this capacitor, as long as it can hold one amp at that time. I'm gonna turn the power off, and uh, it didn't do too bad right there. So if there's a lot of internal resistance in the capacitor, it'll have a bigger voltage across it while it is being charged than when it stops being charged instantly. Then it will uh, drop down a bit. But it uh, looks like we don't have uh, too big of a problem with internal resistance, which makes sense because we were getting a short circuit uh, before. But uh, in any case, now it's gone to constant voltage. So unfortunately, it's not going to be exactly an amp, probably. But uh, it's still holding pretty close. But in any case, primarily, we're interested in uh, if you want to charge a supercapacitor. It's uh, this basic process, which uh, isn't too hard, but it takes a little bit of time to get familiar with it. So now we'll check in with it. By the way, I keep turning the multimeter off between scenes and uh, back on right before I start filming again. And there you can see we're up to uh, 1.8 volts and the uh, current dropped from about one amp right there. So you can get an idea how close you are getting to your final voltage by the uh, final current. The closer it gets to uh, zero amps, the closer you are to getting to your final voltage. I ran into a problem that I didn't expect. So the power supply said uh, zero amps for a period of time, but it was only about uh, 2.1 and a half volts, uh, 2.15 I should say at the power supply but if I measured there I got uh, 2.7 volts and so if this uh, jumper here isn't positioned right it has an open somewhere and there we go it was saying 20 milliamps for a little bit that tells me it's fully charged but again we're gonna look and uh, we'll see a problem and I have an easy solution for uh, fixing it so there you can see it's only about 2.2 volts at the uh, supercapacitor. Now we will measure to uh, the Schottky diode. So this is the uh, supercapacitor. That's also the negative side of the power supply. We saw 2.2. This should be the same voltage, but it's not there. You can see a voltage buildup. And then uh, the other side of the Schottky diode, you see the uh, 2.7 volts. So we know from uh, that voltage difference, those should be exactly the same. So what we can do, is just take another alligator clip jumper here and we could remove the uh, faulty one or we could just leave it stay. We'll just leave it stay to uh, speed this scene up and uh, clip it on there where it's gonna hold on. And now you can see a massive jump in current at the uh, power supply. So I'm gonna leave this blooper in here because that is uh, pretty much explains the troubleshooting technique I did. So I got about 2.2 volts there. This should be pretty much exactly the same, and uh, about uh, 2.4. So we still got a problem. Maybe I have to uh, use uh, thicker alligator jumpers here. Maybe there's a little too much internal resistance here. But in any case, you can see we are actually uh, getting a lot of current now, though. So it should end up uh, charging. So we're going to call it quits here. You can see there's still current flowing, probably about 50 milliamps but these capacitors have a lot of leakage so it might let 50 milliamps of current slip between its plates and so that would mean that it would hold its voltage there forever while 50 milliamps of current are uh, are flowing and it did trickle up a little bit so I measured it recently so it is still going up a little bit but uh, very very slow and we got just a little bit more voltage there there's more resistance in these alligator clips than I thought and that was a big problem in this video. I'll probably address that problem in the next video. Then we can look at the uh, voltage at the shot key diode there. And there you can see it's about uh, 0.234. So actually, since we're going to 7, uh, 2.7, that's uh, 2.4. And this is just a little shy of 2.3. So we're probably actually not doing too bad, it looks like. But uh, in any case, this didn't go near as smoothly as I had hoped, but it gave me ideas for uh, future videos, and then uh, I'll try to make just a better capacitor charging video 
in the future where I do it more appropriately. But hopefully you still enjoyed. So check out one of the other videos I posted to the screen. Click like, subscribe, the bell, all that. Make a donation if you can. I have links down below. But uh, just watching videos helps a ton. Thanks for that. I'll see you in the next video.